My name is Rich Harrington and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. Today we're going to take a look at a simple technique that will save you quite a bit of money and that is how to make your own custom backgrounds from scratch. Now we're going to take advantage of some free textures that you could find on the web. I'll post the link at the photoshopforvideo.com web blog and you can also go directly there if you'd like. What we're going to do here is jump on over to a website called the Plugin Site. And at the plugin site, they have lots of Photoshop plugins, as well as a few things for After Effects and Premiere. So to locate them, you'll go ahead and click on the products link. And if you scroll down, you will find that there is a pack that says Harry's Gradients. They're labeled for After Effects and Premiere, and that's because you could use these as gradient wipe transitions. But in this case, we're going to create some custom backgrounds from them. So you can go ahead and download those and you'll use them for this tutorial. Now I've gone back into Adobe Bridge and navigated to the downloaded folder. And the reason why I did this is because Bridge makes it really easy to browse things visually. And what we're going to do here is just select a few of these. Now some of them are very abstract, some of them are very organic. Let's go ahead and pick a few here. I'm just command clicking to select multiple textures and then we'll go ahead and open these up. There we go. And I'll open those up using Photoshop. Now, once I have the patterns open, we're going to combine them into a single document. So let's just go ahead and choose Select All, Command or Control A, copy that, close it, and paste it to our next document. If we look at the Layers tab there, you'll see we have two layers. Switch to the next one, do the same thing, Select, copy, close, paste. And let's go to the last one there. Select all, copy, close, paste. Now, I don't know exactly which one of these textures we'll use, but we'll play with these. And what we're going to do here is blend them to make a new background. Let's go ahead and start with the two bottommost layers. We'll select that layer right there. And what I want to let you in on is a little secret. Now, most designers know that blending modes really offer a lot of flexible options when it comes to design. Now, blend modes can be a little bit tricky, but what I'm going to show you is a trick that allows you to not worry about how they work and to just start to design with them. Let's go ahead and select the Move tool here, and I'll just then press Shift plus or minus. And as I do that, you'll see that the blend mode is changing over in the Layers palette. And this is mixing the layers together differently. So this allows us to combine the layers into a new look. I'm going to go ahead into something here like an overlay. And I could lower the opacity to taste if I need to. Let's go to our next layer, turn it on, select it, and do the same shortcut of Shift Plus. And I'm just stepping through the blend modes. Now I like that. That's a nice pattern. And what I'd like to do now is experiment and see if this organic texture adds anything. There it is. Let's do Shift Plus and step through. And as I go through here, I think that'll work. I like that there, but I'm going to lower the opacity much lower to about 30%. Now, there is no right or wrong answer here. You're just experimenting. And if the first time you combine a few layers together it doesn't work, just try a different combination. Again, blend modes will often require you to just try them out and find what you like. This seems to be working here, so I'm going to go ahead and select all these layers and shift click, and then I'm going to right click and tell these to convert to a smart object. This way they're all stacked together in one layer, and if I need to, I could step in and modify it. Let's go ahead and make a new document, File New, and I'll pick from the video preset sizes. We'll do this as a standard definition broadcast piece, and click OK. Now, if I want to drag between documents, I'm going to need to cycle my modes there by pressing the F key, which makes it easier to do drag and drop. And I can just drag that smart object and drop it in. It's just about the right size, not a big deal. I'm going to scale that up a little bit. Command T for free transform, 
hold down the shift in the option keys and drag on a PC that's shift and alt. That works well for me. What I want to do is I'm going to blur this a little bit. So let's duplicate it and put a copy on top. We'll name that background copy and we'll apply a Gaussian blur. There we go. I'm just going to soften that up very heavily and then blend the copy with the lower one. And you see what we're getting there is a nice sort of softening and glow effect. This is just about there. I'm going to experiment a little bit here. We can go ahead and do a free transform really quick, scale that up and I'm just going to sort of move that down here to the bottom, get a little bit of an offset. That works well. And now let's just finish stylizing this. One of the first things I'm going to do is add some color. You could do this with a solid or better yet, the very flexible gradient map. Let's go ahead, click the adjustment layer icon and choose gradient map. And this allows us to pick a range of colors to map to the image. You can use any of the gradients that you have loaded or you can load additional gradients into your library. Depending on what you pick, you'll get very different results. That seems to work pretty well. I'm just going to go ahead here and get rid of the white and make a few adjustments here. That seems pretty good. And then click OK. If you don't like the way the gradient's going, you can always click reverse to go the opposite direction. And that's just about there. All I'm going to do is get rid of this black here because it's distracting. There we go. Now, just like any other layer, you could blend this. And if you have the Move tool selected, you just use the shortcut of Shift Plus, And that allows you to step through your blend modes and create a different look. I like that overlay look there. It's very dramatic. Let's go ahead here and we're just going to do a simple little trick. Select All and then choose Edit, Copy Merged. We'll put a copy on top and we'll blur that again. Command F to run the filter and then blend that in just a little bit as well. And notice how we get some nice effects with that blending. When I'm satisfied, I'll often finish this out doing two things. The first is sometimes I'll toss a solid color layer in just to put a little more color in overall. We could do this by selecting a color that's similar to what's in the document or just picking a new color and then changing it into something like multiply or even just lowering its opacity down a bit to say 70%. Then, to finish this out, I highly recommend grabbing a photorealistic image. Let's just go ahead and we'll take a pattern of some gears here. And we'll use this stock photo right here. There we go. Let me select it and copy it. And then we'll just paste it right in. Use Command T for free transform. And then scale this down. Remember, if you hold Shift and Option or Shift and Alt, it'll scale towards the center equally. There we go. And let's just change its blend mode to something softer, like soft light. Remember, Shift Plus works as well here, so you could step through until you get a pattern you like. That's working very well. It's just a little too detailed for a background. So I'm going to do that same trick again. Select All, Copy Merged, Paste, and we'll run that Gaussian Blur filter, but this time just a little bit softer. Let's do a value of 10 and we'll blend that in a little bit as well. And there you have it, a nice background. Depending on how we blend that, we can get a very different look. I'm going to go here to something a little darker. Let's try Multiply. Good. I've got this distracting color here on the right, no big deal. Just duplicate that red, toss it up top here, and there we have it. It evens it out nicely. So. We made a custom background from scratch, just using one photorealistic layer and a couple of abstract patterns. Now, you can adapt this idea to many different outcomes, depending upon the source materials you feed in, the colors you use, the blending modes, it all comes together. What I wanted you to pick up on here is first, how easy blend modes are to use, and second, when it comes to backgrounds, a lot of times you want to stack and blend especially introducing some softening via a Gaussian or lens blur, which helps defocus the background, making it less distracting. The thing I see happen all the time is that amateur designers use backgrounds that are way too busy, and they actually distract 
from the text or logos going over the backgrounds. A background is just that, a background. So remember to tone it down and defocus it a bit. Hope you take a chance to visit our website at photoshopforvideo.com. You can check out the book there, Photoshop for Video from Focal Press, as well as a ton of free resources that we have posted. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Rich Harrington.